what's in the box? I don't know. New Aqua sent us some replacement filters for our reverse osmosis filter system. So let's open the box, check out these replacement filters, and then figure out how to swap the filters underneath the sink. So we have a brand new reverse osmosis membrane, RO membrane. We have a whole host of other filters. It looks like what they sent us out is a complete filter kit. Some of the filters you need to change every six months. Some of the filters you need to change every year. It just kind of depends. And so it looks like they've set us up with all the filters. So we're just gonna swap them all out. I've never replaced filters on a new Aqua. So you're gonna be doing this for the first time along with me here. Urinal cake. Everybody's got a urinal cake under their sink, right? Tell me you're a plumber without telling me you're a plumber. You have a urinal cake underneath your kitchen sink. First thing we're gonna do is kill the water. We're gonna close that shutoff valve on the bladder tank. This bladder tank is fully pressurized. It's got air and water in it. And so we've killed the water supply to the system. And now that we've killed the shutoff valve on the bladder tank, now we should be able to turn the faucet on, bleed the pressure off of the system. And then as we're pulling these canisters apart, we're not gonna get sprayed with a flood of water. There will be a wet mess underneath this. I will have to put some towels down underneath this for sure. They have this really cool flood stop device that comes down underneath here that has this, this little wafer tablet. And, and this is a uh, expandable material that as soon as water touches it, it expands and pushes this up and kills the flow of water. I'm gonna dig this tablet out and set them off to the side because again, we are gonna get some water down here and the last thing I wanna do is get these tablets wet and ruin them. So we've opened the faucet, we've bled off all the pressure in the system. So now we should just be able to start pulling these canisters apart and replacing the filters that are inside these canisters. Let's just start taking these things off and seeing what we come up with. That is really full. So there's one. And I'm gonna set these on the floor in the order that I'm taking them off. More water. I don't know if you can hear that. It's like dying a thousand deaths or something. It's like screaming. So filter three, I say filter three. I'm calling it filter three because it's the third one I'm removing. It is a clear canister that is just a sediment filter. And so we'll be able to compare a couple of things from these filters. If your home does not have a water softener like mine does, then this sediment filter can get really nasty really fast. But my home has a water softener and a water softener acts like a big sediment filter. And so we're softening and, and taking out a lot of the stuff that this would normally be taking out. However, you can still see a very noticeable difference in the coloration of these two filters. My water softener is doing great, but it's not doing 100% of the job. Nothing's ever 100%, right? That's pretty cool to see the difference between the two. It's like a teeth whitening commercial, right? What shade are you? My teeth are probably closer to this one. So we'll drop that bad boy in there, and that one's done. Okay, next filter up. Looks like this one. This is the middle filter. I don't know if you can hear that, putting it next to the microphone. There is some media inside this filter. Whatever the media is inside here causes this thing to whistle a little bit. The middle filter in. And then finally, the left-hand filter. All of these filters look incredibly different, by the way. This one is just a woven, spun material. This one is a canister with a plastic exterior. And then this one is a canister with like this expanded mesh plastic material on there, just like this one. We're gonna be able to see the coloration difference with these two as well. So this one is gonna be your carbon filter. No shaking it. However, you do see the carbon start to migrate through the coloration of everything. It's like a charcoal filter or a carbon filter. If you look into the bottom of that, you can see carbon down in the bottom of that assembly. So after it gets wet, you're seeing that kind of permeate through. This is not 
I mean, it's a dirty filter, but it's not dark because it's dirty. This one's dark because it's a black carbon filter inside there and it's just wet. Some of our water softeners that we put in, they have an automatic backwashing carbon filter built into them. When we install them brand new, a little bit of that carbon gets loose and kind of runs through the system. And when it does that, it makes your water gray for the first few gallons of water coming out of a faucet. Pretty normal to see. We'll drop this guy down in here. Let's do the two filters on the top. And those filters are gonna be this carbon polishing filter. And then our RO membrane. And they sent us these fittings here too, which might mean that we have to replace these fittings that go in the ends of this. We're gonna see how that works. We're gonna pull out our little retainer clips. We're gonna save those so we don't lose them. The left side of the assembly, we have the single elbow that goes on. So we push that in and then we have to put our retainer clip in there to make sure it doesn't come loose. And then out the right side of the assembly, we actually have the dual sided filter assembly. So this is kind of what goes to, this splits and goes to our faucet, but then it also goes to our bladder tank. And so we've got to pull this clip out and put the dual sided fitting in. And then you pull them back out a little bit to leave room for this retainer clip to go in there. I've already done it on the one side. We have to pull our hoses out. We have three hoses to pull out for this one. I've already done this left side. Now I gotta reach back behind and do these other hoses back here. So there's one hose, more retainer clips. So this is our old filter and it's coming out and it's gonna drip and drain and it's all full of stuff. We have one filter left and this is gonna be the harder one to get to because I have no clue what we're working with here. Hey, I should have done this from the get-go. Pull it down and make it easier to work on. Pull another retainer, and then we're gonna use the smaller end of the filter wrench to take this nut off over here. We can run this side of the wrench on here, and hopefully, yeah, pull that off. More water coming out. Like I say, this is a messy process. There we go. So this one has quite a few O-rings in it that seal it in place really well. So the RO filter is out. Let's get the new one in place. Again, it's got the same O-rings and everything on it. So we're gonna shove that down in there and get it in place. And it's gotta go way down in there. Now that it's down in there, we can put our top back on. One thing to remember is these are all O-ring connections. They are not threat, they are threaded, but they don't rely on the threads to seal everything. They rely on the O-rings to seal everything. When we rely on the O-rings to seal everything, we don't have to get them super tight. We can just get them hand tight. This red goes back into here, just like it did before. And now we can get things set up for this top canister to go on here. This top canister just snaps into place. Back up on both mounts. Nope, it's hard to see, but our yellow tube is going into the end. Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm putting the yellow tube into this end down here. Okay, it's in and done. And then now our blue tube is coming into the top. Okay, all of that's done. So now we just gotta screw on our canisters onto the bottom and we're done. And we don't wanna mistake the order that they were in. We wanna make sure we keep them back in their order. And then one final thing that we wanna make sure we're doing too, is we wanna be putting our retainer clips back in all of these positions here. Cause we wanna lock these retainer clips help keep these tubes from ever coming apart. Now we're all swapped. So now it's just a matter of getting these canisters back into where they need to go. And they'll thread up on their own. And again, remember it's an O-ring connection. We just wanna get a little snug, nothing crazy. Okay, so that is all it takes. And now we can turn our water back on. We can check for leaks. I'm gonna put our water tablet back in its container. We're gonna close that down, which opens that valve back up, by the way. Turn our main supply on. Here you can actually watch the water rise up in here. So that's filling the first canister and then it's got to fill all five of them. We're just letting things pressurize back up. So I've not turned on our bladder tank yet. I've just left this faucet open for now and we're bleeding air out of everything. Now, an RO filter is going to eject water and air out of several different places. It kicks reject water down the drain, 
but it also kicks supply water out of this faucet here. We're fully pressurized up. We're gonna check everything for leaks. We're gonna restore the bladder to service. And then we're gonna get some spitting and sputtering out of this system for quite a while, maybe even a couple of days. These are all waterlogged and heavy. All of the ones that we took out were all full of air. And so that air just has to work through the system and it just takes a couple of days for it to do that. Let's go ahead and turn our tank back on. You see a little bit of black water come out of there. That's that carbon filter that's getting disturbed. First round of water that came out of here was a little, it was tinted a little black. And again, that's that carbon filter doing what it does. Just like I mentioned earlier, anytime we install a carbon filter, the first little bit that we get out of an assembly might have a little bit of a charcoal look to it. We're in, we're dry, nothing's leaking. We've got our flood piece back in, our little tablet, our wafer tablet back into there. We are good to go. So I'm gonna start loading all this stuff back up underneath the sink. We've got trouble-free filtered water for the next I don't know, six months, 12 months, and then we'll have to do the filter swap again. But hey, it keeps us from buying bottled water. This line here actually runs down under the floor and goes over to my ice maker. So my ice cubes are all reverse osmosis filtered. I've got a fridge in my garage that makes ice. It's reverse osmosis filtered. And I have a refrigerator in the basement that is reverse osmosis water filtered as well. So basically anything that is drinking water or ice in my home I make reverse osmosis filtered, so that way it tastes amazing. This is my home, so I, I have a rough idea of where all this stuff was, but when we're in a customer's home, we have no clue. That was pretty quick and easy. I don't know, that took probably, took us probably 10 or 12 minutes. It's really a fast process. Just be prepared for some water on the ground. You know, throw some towels underneath there and everything else. This is also a good reminder if you watch the original installation videos, we made sure that the filter assembly was not sitting down on the ground. That makes it easier to drop those canisters out from underneath there. So this is a good visual as to why you think that that far ahead whenever you're doing this. So all in all, we're done, we're good. And if you need replacement filters for yours, there's gonna be a link down in the description of this video. You can click on that link and order filters for your new Aqua water filter system. So until next time, guys, we will see you later.